Good morning. Uh, I know it's a bit early to be doing a product review, but I've been up since a lot before this. Today, as you will see in a minute. Today, we're going to be looking at three things on this phone. We're going to be looking at battery life, waterproofing, and we're going to look at the benchmark score on Antutu. Now, first, we'll look at the battery life. And as you can see, the always on screen here is displaying 80% battery at 6.56, nearly 7 a.m. Now, um, that would be uh, pretty pathetic if I got up at half past six, but actually I've been up for three and a half hours now, and I have used the phone quite a lot during that period. So let's have a look and see what's been using the battery and get an estimate of what sort of lifespan you could get out of the phone during a normal day. So looking at battery usage, it says eight hours remaining with 80% use. And I would say that when you're using the phone pretty heavily, it does go down about 10% an hour. Obviously, you're not gonna be using your phone continuously throughout the day, all the time. Um, and if you are, you're going to expect it to go flat sooner than the whole day. But that's been used con continuously. And if you actually need to just use it as a phone, you could put it into power saving mode or ultra power saving here and pretty much double, or a bit more than double, the lifespan. What's been using the battery? Well, you can see the screen on's been nearly half the time. Um, I have been doing quite a bit of internet browsing, mostly, and very little else. Um, the decline uh, obviously slows down uh, when I am putting it down and not using it uh, intensively. But at this rate, um, you'd get a good 11 hours out of the phone, the amount I've been using it today, 3.30 till 2.30. Not bad, really, considering. Um, this is the second charge the phone has had, and lithium batteries do improve with about six or seven charges to their maximum. Let's have a look at the benchmark test. <clears throat> so I ran Antutu benchmark, which is uh, the easiest one to use, and I got this quite outstanding score here um, of 129,396, which really quite surprised me because Honestly, I did not expect it to be quite that fast. And if you look at the ranking, it's way up here above anything else. Um, I don't know if there are any other uh, phones with this kind of performance, but it's so much faster than uh, any of the other phones I've ever tried. And, you know, I was thinking that the Z5 was quite fast when my son got one. And uh, I've had a look at a Note 5, and that seemed pretty fast. But I have to say, using this phone, the performance is phenomenal. It's web browsing, app opening, um, rendering, display, everything is so quick. Now I have an iPhone 6, and I know some of you will be very upset to hear that, um, and they say the 6S is about 20 to 25% faster than the iPhone 6. This thing is way faster than the iPhone 6. It really is a very slick performer. So let's have a look at the info here, um, just for your perusal. They have reduced the camera size to 12.2 megapixels, but those pixels uh, apparently are much better defined, much better at capturing light, and therefore the pictures look much better until you blow them up to the size of a, a say, a 16 megapixel camera. Um, RAM, as with all of these Android phones, it does seem to use pretty much all of its RAM. It's only got 800 megabytes available uh, out of the supposed four gig it's got. Um, Storage-wise, the operating system takes up about seven gig, which is less than it has in the past. They seem to have cut that down a bit. So uh, all of this isn't particularly interesting. It just tells you about um, the phone sensors and what have you. Just have a look at the figures for all of these, if you're interested in all that sort of thing. So there you have it. That has the Samsung Exynos uh, processor, not the Snapdragon 820. I think that version is going to be going to the US and the UK gets the Samsung chip. Right, well, you've seen that. Now the next thing to do is do an underwater test. I've just bought this phone and it was rather expensive. So now I'm going to do the scary part and do the underwater test. And as you can see, this is a very beautiful new phone. And I'm going to put it without any caps or protection or anything. I'm going to put it straight in the water bowl. Here we go. Cross your fingers, everybody. Well, there it is. Can we even operate the phone underwater? Let's have a look and see. This could be interesting. So let's do a Google search. No, the touch screen doesn't respond underwater. This usually happens. 
um, with waterproof phones or not. Um, once water gets to the edge of the screen, it shorts out the digitizer on the front panel and the phone won't respond to any touches. So the water protection on this phone is IP68 and it's supposed to be able to withstand, I think it's half an hour under a meter of water. Um, I'm not going to leave it in for that long because it's my new phone and I don't really want to do that. But as you can see, it is surviving quite happily under the water and nothing seems to have made an incursion under the screen. There, it's so bored with the uh, underwater test, it's even gone to sleep. So I'm going to fish it out and give it a dry. Well, it's one way of cleaning your phone if it gets a bit mucky. Let's just rub it down. <clears throat> Hopefully the screen will work pretty much straight away afterwards. So it is working, the edges come up here. Home. I have to say the fingerprint sensor on this is very impressive, very quick to unlock. Are we any the worse for wear? Let's have a look. Um, no, the minute it was wiped off, the digitizer starts working perfectly again. So there you have it, the waterproof Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. Thank you for watching.